The new Fortnite season has just dropped and the entire map is now cell shaded, giving it a full on cartoon look. But even though the graphics do look a lot simpler, that doesn't always mean you'll get higher FPS. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to actually get the best performance possible, sharing the most optimal settings, Windows tweaks, GPU optimizations, BIOS tweaks, and so much more to help you get an edge going into the new Simpson season. If the video does help, please consider using my creator code in the item shop when you do buy that brand new battle pass. But yeah, getting straight into it, while you are playing this brand new awesome looking season, you will likely encounter performance issues for at least the first week and I'm going to explain why. And don't worry, this is completely normal, it's because your graphics card has to recompile all the new shaders that the game has recently added. This shader compilation process happens live when you do play, which causes those early season FPS drops, stutter and even random spikes. To speed up this entire process, it's very important that you explore all the new areas in the game, so make sure to discover all of those greyed out areas. The sooner you do this, the faster your system will compile the shaders. As a bonus, some players have said that increasing their shader cache size to 10GB up from the default driver, which is 4GB, has actually helped them a ton. Once you've done that, we can go into the video settings and start optimising these. I recommend full screen due to the fact it massively lowers your system latency over windowed full screen. However, if you do prefer windowed full screen because of the quicker alt tab and out, then ensure that you use this setting so you don't feel a latency difference. As for VSync, you want to turn this off as it's essential for reducing input delay and boosting FPS. For frame rate limit, you'll notice that some pros play with unlimited FPS while others cap it at 240 FPS. The best approach here is to cap it to whatever your highest refresh rate amount is. For most people, that's 240 fps for rendering modes i recommend performance because it's literally what each and every pro player is using for those that have an nvidia gpu you should use the dx11 performance mode whereas if you've got an amd one you're probably better off using the dx12 performance mode in the graphics section while none of these settings right here do affect performance lowering the 3d resolution can provide a significant fps boost but do be aware that the game's visual quality will decrease as you lower it for view distance Instance, most players do leave this on low to maximize FPS, but for the very small FPS difference, a lot of pros tend to increase this, as it gives you a huge advantage of being able to see loot at a farther distance. As for textures, I recommend using this on low, as this will reduce the graphical fidelity, in turn boosting your FPS. In the advanced settings, if you do have an NVIDIA GPU, you will see the NVIDIA Reflex setting. What this does is it reduces input latency by ensuring your system is ready to render each frame immediately. From my research, most high-end systems tend to use on plus boost, most medium-end systems just use on, and most low-end systems just turn this off as they get FPS stuttering. Then just below reflex you'll see performance stats which I highly recommend you disable as you don't want all your information getting sent to Epic Games which could cause a micro stutter. Oh after that, if you head into the game settings and scroll down a little, there's a few tweaks you can make to further improve your FPS. Just disable these four replay options options if you do not use them. Now let's move on to some basic and advanced Windows optimizations. Starting off with a system restore point. Even though I doubt you'll need it, it's better to be safer than sorry. For most people, around 10 gigabytes should be more than enough. After that, it'll create one in case you do need to roll back for any reason. From there, open up the run box and type in system properties performance.exe and this will open up the visual effects tab. If you click on adjust for best performance, you'll notice it unchecks all the set ends but what we need to do is tick these five essential ones to get the basic functionality from windows it's just more stripped down without the animations and stuff like that after that a thing you can do is head into the task manager and look in performance to your surprise the uptime may be very very high like some of these examples are on screen like some are just ridiculous and the reason it's so high is because of a fast stop feature in windows which you can disable without it being permanent in the settings all you have to do is hold shift then press the shutdown down in the start menu and that right there will turn it from being a high uptime to being on zero it'll basically reset it and i like to do this every now and then next you want to go into gaming under game bar make sure this is disabled captures too i like to go ahead and turn this off and we've got game mode this is something i really like and i do use now these days as i feel like it does make my frame rate more stable from there below if you go into graphics if you see this setting called hardware accelerated gpu scheduling you want to turn it on to reduce system latency and and 
improve performance. Now you can head into the settings into privacy and security, Windows security, device security. Under core isolation details, you will find memory integrity, which I like to disable. Now, yes, this is a security feature. However, it is very CPU heavy. So if you do disable it, you will get more FPS. However, if you are paranoid, you can just keep it on if you like. If you're careful about what you download, you should be fine. But at least while gaming, you should have this off. Also inside threat protection, I like to go ahead and disable periodic scanning as this can actually occur when you're gaming. And as you can imagine, that can cause stutters. It's something you should be scanning manually, not automatically. After that, I go into general and I deselect all of these. And then I like to disable this one right here. Inside the app section under installed apps, you want to go through all of these and uninstall any that you don't use. So for example, Microsoft OneDrive, I do not use that, so it will be getting uninstalled. However, don't go too crazy with this. You only want to uninstall something that you know what it does. Like when it comes to these files right here, the Visual C++, um, you definitely don't want to get rid of these as they'll have some sort of purpose with some software. Furthermore, if you do use an app, but you don't want it running in the background, you can click on the three dots there, go into advanced options, and then you can basically stop this from running in the background by clicking on never. And this will also lower your overall process count. Oh, another thing in apps, if you go into startup, you can also go through this and turn off apps that you don't want starting with Windows. Again, don't go crazy as for some stuff, you should leave this on. Next in system, head into notifications. I recommend the do not disturb setting to prevent any distractions. You can then deselect all of these three settings. Next inside the windows updates, I do actually recommend keeping windows semi up to date, but you need to do it when you want to. Don't let this automatically do it for you. That's why I like to pause my updates. I like to unselect this. I like to then go into advanced options, have all of these unselected, then go into delivery optimization and uncheck this one right here. Then go into power. For most people, they keep this option on balanced as it keeps your CPU clock speed at a normal base rate. And it is the best of both worlds really. However, you can go into the CMD and paste in this command right here, which will create a ultimate power plan. To enable that, you need to go into the edit power plan settings where you can actually select it. I only recommend the use of this power plan if you are gaming. If you're not gaming, you should use balanced. Moving on, you want to right click on your desktop, go under show more options and click the Nvidia control panel. Once inside here, if you go over to the left under adjust desktop size and position to get the lowest amount of input delay, if you play on 1920 by 1080, you want to choose your scaling mode as no scaling and you want to perform the scaling on display. However, if you play a stretched resolution, you must have your perform scaling on display, the perform scaling on, the GPU, and then you need to tick that little checkbox right there. After that, head into manage 3D settings, where I'm going to list the best settings you should be using right now. Image scaling you want off, ambient occlusion off, you want all these anti-aliasing settings off. Same with the background application, you want that off. CUDA GPUs, I'll leave us on all with the driver default as well. DSR factors, you want that off. When it comes to low latency mode, and um, this essentially removes the rendering queue between the CPU and GPU, which in turn removes one latency step from your mouse clicking to it reaching your display, basically resulting in much lower system latency if you do have this setting turned on or either on ultra. Instead of applying the setting though inside the NVIDIA control panel, you're far better off doing it in game as it actually takes priority. In the OpenGL rendering CPU setting, it's very important that you select your main graphics card and um, if you're using DirectX 12 the setting doesn't really do much but if you're like many of the pros who use DirectX 11 selecting your graphics card here will make sure Fortnite always uses your dedicated GPU instead of integrated graphics. As for power management mode I've actually been preferring the maximum performance even though I did used to have it on normal this again is something you need to test on your own system to see which one's better. Preferred refresh rate it's important you keep this on the highest one available as you do want the max monitor refresh rate hertz. Shader cache size, this basically stores all the shaders in real time to use later. I recommend that you use 10 for this. Texture filtering, this is something you can experiment on your own PCs. Um, I've actually been enjoying this one being on. Uh, rather than the default being off. Uh, negative LD bias, I like this to be on allow. The quality, I like to be on high performance. And trilinear, I like to have that on the default on. As for threaded optimization, I like to keep this on auto and I also leave all of these on default at the bottom. Moving on, I want to show you guys some really easy BIOS tweaks that can increase the speed of your RAM and boost your FPS. Because when you bought your RAM, it's very possible that it's not running at the speed it should be. To get what you actually paid for, what you need to do is 
has enabled something called XMP or the AMD equivalent. To double check, you need to restart your PC. You need to go into the BIOS. You can usually get in here by pressing the delete button or F2 on boot. And then you need to turn on the XMP or the DOCP setting. Not only will this give you a nice performance boost, but you'll also get the speeds that you paid for when you did buy your RAM. And this is something that helps massively with FPS stability as well. If it helped out, please drop a like, subscribe, and be sure to use someone's creator code in the item shop. Before you do go, feel free to check out any of my other videos on screen right now.